Okay, this time we're going to invite Dr. Tab to come speak to us. Amen. Amen. Glad to have him with us Amen. and uh, glad he could come up. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Good to be in church. Amen. Amen. I'd rather be here than in jail, wouldn't you? Amen. <laughs> Amen. It was on the Lord that I did not teach Sunday school. Because what you're going to get now is part two of the Sunday school. Oh, amen. Amen. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 10, please. Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> and by the way, for those of you who are members of this church, I've known your pastor uh, 40 nearly 50 years, so, you know, if there's anything you think he's hiding from you, just come and talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, let me just say when we sin, that's what we do, Amen. we sin willfully. After that we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite under the Spirit of grace. Father, we thank you again for the privilege of being in the house of God this morning. Thank you for everybody who's here. We just pray you would speak to our hearts through the word here in the next few minutes. And uh, Lord, if anybody here that does not know Jesus as Savior, never applied the blood, I pray you'd show them how to do that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, I think uh, verse 29, I think what we heard in Sunday school from Mr. MacArthur will fit perfectly there. Hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing. Mm. Uh, claiming it's human blood and not uh, the blood of God, as the Bible says, is calling it an uh, unholy uh, thing. You can't, we can't overemphasize the importance of the blood Amen. for our salvation, for our eternity, and so forth. Back in the early 20th century, there was a Baptist preacher in New York City. His name was Harry Emerson Prosdick, and he made this statement. He said, the blood of Jesus Christ availeth no more than the blood of a chicken. Mm. If that's not blasphemy, I don't know what is. And Mr. MacArthur is just a notch above that one. He says the blood doesn't count. It's all symbolic and so forth like that. But it's his death. Could I say if he was strangled to death, you couldn't be saved? Amen. If he was hung, you couldn't be saved. Amen. If he was burned at the stake, you couldn't be saved. Because without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Amen. Blood had to be shed to accomplish our salvation. Uh, you're going to get some... Some more, some of the same verses this morning that we heard in Sunday school, Leviticus 17, verse 11, the life of the flesh is in the blood. You cannot live physically without blood because it's the life of the flesh. You cannot live spiritually without the blood of Christ. That's our lifeline uh, for our spiritual life. Amen. Leviticus 17, 11 went on to say, it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. Hebrews 9, 22, without shedding of blood, there is no remission, absolutely no forgiveness at all without uh, the blood of Christ being applied. Look at 1 John chapter 1, if you would, over a few pages. 1 John chapter 1, <clears throat> and in verse 7, he says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Every bit of it cleansed away by the blood. Back in the 1700s, I'm sure most of you are familiar with John Wesley. He was a, a circuit riding preacher. He logged some 200,000 miles on horseback, uh, preached as much as five times a day until his last sermon was preached when he was 81 years old, and he died uh, within hours of that. Uh, but he was on the road one day going to a meeting somewhere, and he got held up by a highwayman, which is, of course, a, a robber on the road there. Held him up, took, it, took what he had, and as he rode away, uh, Wesley called out to him. He son, said, son, if you ever get tired of this life of crime, remember the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth from all sin. 
About 20 years later, uh, Wesley was preaching in a meeting, and at the end of the service, somebody came up to him, and he said, Sir, I'm the man who robbed you about 20 years ago, and you call out to me the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. He said, I never could get away from that. It haunted me day and night. I could not sleep. And I finally went and found me a preacher and told me how to be saved. Amen. 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 That's what does it. The blood of Amen. Jesus Christ cleanses from all a sin. Could I say Christianity is a bloody religion? Amen. This this book is full of blood. The blood Amen. of prophets, the blood of the saints, um, the blood of Jesus Christ, of course. And our songbook is a bloody songbook. About 35 years ago, the Methodist denomination decided they'd take all the blood out of their hymn books. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they ever did that or not, but if you try to take them out of that hymn book, you'd eliminate about 20% of that book. Because right. many, many songs in there about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we serve God through a bloody uh, religion. I'm going to give you an acrostic this morning. That's uh, just taking a word and taking each letter of that word, making a new word, and that's going to be our our uh, uh, outline for this message. And the acrostic is based on blood, B-L-O-O-D. Let me say, first of all, the B means we've been bought by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9 says, He that was rich, that's, uh, that's the Lord himself, he's the creator, according to John chapter 1. He created everything out here, the whole universe, the world, us, the you know, all the creatures on the planet, all that kind of stuff. He was rich. The uh, Bible says he owned the cattle on a thousand hills. He said all the gold is mine, all the silver is mine, all the souls are mine, the earth and all its fullness and so forth belongs to him. He that was rich became poor, laid it all aside, humiliated himself to come down here and, and be with us. Uh, he that was rich became poor, that through his poverty we might be rich. Amen. If you're saved Amen. today, you are a very wealthy Amen. person. Amen. Uh, you are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, and He owns everything. Right. Amen. So Amen. whatever He gets from the Father, uh, we're going to be we're going to be sharing in that. We're going to be part of it as well. So He became poor so we could be rich. Uh, Philippians chapter two, verses five through eight. Won't take time for some of these to read some of these passages, but it says He made Himself of no reputation. Uh, and became a servant unto death, even the death of the cross. We cannot really comprehend, I don't think, what Jesus paid to, to save our soul. We cannot grasp all that was involved in him coming here and dying to pay for our sins and, and going through everything he did. First Peter 1 verses 18 and 19 says, You were not redeemed with silver and gold, uh, with corruptible things of silver and gold from your vain conversation received from your fathers. That was our Adamic nature and so forth. Uh, received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without spot and without blemish. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20, verse 20 says, Paul says, we are bought with a price. What was the price? It was the precious blood of Christ, the ultimate price paid uh, to redeem us and to atone for our sins. Matthew 20, 28, you heard it in Sunday school, says the church was purchased with God's own blood. Amen. I, I'm, I'm like you. I cannot understand how MacArthur come up with all that stuff. It's so plain in the Bible. You know, it's just so plain. Romans 3, 25 says Jesus is our propitiation. That means our payment through faith in, not his death, but in his blood. Through Amen. faith in his blood. Blood. Romans 5 verse 9, we're justified by the blood, the Bible says. And that's why in Romans 5 verse 1, therefore we're justified by faith. Faith of what? Faith in his blood, as I gave you a minute ago. Justified by faith, we can come boldly into the throne of grace to get what? Our prayers answered. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, let's come boldly and find mercy and grace to help in time of need. Colossians 1 verses 20 and 21, having made peace through the blood of his cross. What kind of peace? Peace between us and God, okay? Okay. have made peace through the blood of his cross to reconcile you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your, uh, in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled through forgiveness of us receiving the blood uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ to pay for our sins, wash our sins away. In fact, Revelation 1 5 says he has Jesus has washed us from our sins in his own Amen. Blood. Amen. We've had a bloodbath and we're yes. saved. Amen. Right. Washed in the blood of, of Christ. And you better get used to singing about the blood. We sang Amen. several songs this morning about blood because that is the key song of heaven. Say, so how do you know? Revelation 5 verse 9 says so. Up in heaven said they sung a new song saying, Thou, thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. 
God. So Amen. that's the power of heaven, okay? Colossians 1, 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. All the new Bibles take through his blood out of that verse and just says, uh, in whom we have redemption, forgiveness of sins. But the, your Bible, the real Bible, you know what the real Bible is? Amen. Somebody tell me what it is. It's the King James Bible. Amen. Amen. says, uh, in whom we have redemption through his blood, emphasis even the forgiveness of sins right. through his blood. Blood. So, first of all, we've been bought by the blood of God to save our eternal souls um, and spend uh, forever with Him. Ephesians 2 6 says, uh, We're even now seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So, what does that mean? It means God, as far as God's concerned, in His own mind, uh, you're as good as in heaven already because it's guaranteed. Amen. You're seated in, in Christ Jesus in heavenly places, in, in, as far as God is concerned. Uh, even right now. Right. And we read there in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, that we have fellowship. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. But all of us who are saved, we're, we're the family of God. Amen. Okay, Ephesians chapter 3 talks about that. We're the family of God, and we fellowship with each other. Somebody said, uh, well, blood's thicker than water. Because may I say the blood of Christ is the thickest of all? Amen. It binds us all together. Okay, so uh, we've been bought by the blood. Let me say second, we're loved because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We're loved by the Lord himself. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life. No, no, so then see, there is God. He laid down his life for us. Romans 5, verse 8. God committed his love toward us and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Could I say the word commend does not mean give, it means to offer. God offers his love to anybody who will receive Christ as, as uh, uh, their Savior. Committed it to us while we get sinners. Christ died for us. 1 John 4, verse 12, God dwelleth in us. How does he do that? Through application of the blood, and his love is perfected in us. Uh, we can't even comprehend the love of God. Amen. You know, it takes all we can do to figure out what love is in the first place. Yeah. Uh, we, we really had no love before we got saved. But in fact, uh, you told that in Titus. He said we were hateful and hating one another. You say, well, I never hated anybody. Well, take it up with God. He's the one who said that, okay? Right. We were hateful. We, we had that Adamic nature. We might not have expressed hatred, but, uh, you know, somebody crosses our brain, boy. It comes mm -hmm. up in the mind, does it not? Right. With that old Adamic nature. And so his love gets perfected in us as uh, children of God. And that love is exercised from us toward the saints. But further than that, did not the Lord say, love your enemies? Right. Yeah. Amen. Well, that's a, that's a true test of love. Mm -hmm. Amen. And forgive those who've, who have wronged you and so forth. First John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner, what kind is it, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the sons of God. Boy, what, what a statement that right. God would say that about us wretched creatures that deserve you. Hey, we still deserve hell when we're yep. saved. Right. Right. Probably did something yesterday. We deserved hell. Amen. Don't just care about that Adamic nature. John 17, verse 23. Thou, the Father, has loved them, the saints, as thou hast loved me, the Son. Can you grasp that? It says God the Father loves you if you're saved with the same love that he loves his only begotten Son. Mm, amen. That's pretty strong stuff there. So we're, lo we're loved not only by the Lord, but we're loved by the saints. Could I say, if you're saved, the world does not love you. Amen. Right. It doesn't love you, but God does, and his children do. First John 1, 7, again, if we walk in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Now, how'd you get in the light? With the blood. That's how you got in there in the first place. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, he says uh, that God has made us accepted in the beloved. The Amen. beloved is Jesus Christ. We're accepted in him, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Over and over, uh, scores of verses. Tell us the blood is what got us in. I, I, I really can't understand that nut out there in California, can you? California is the land of fruits and nuts. <laughs> John 13, verse 35, you are my disciples if you have love one to another. He did not say love one for another. He said love one to another. That's a different ballgame altogether. The word to is an action word. You have love one to another. In other words, if we really say <clears throat> we really love the Lord, we're going to demonstrate our love for each other. And we will know that brother or sister so-and-so loves me because right. we're, we're children of God. We're part of the same family. So he said, you have love one to another. That makes you my disciple. All right, we're bought by the blood. We're loved because of the blood. Number three, we're overcomers because of the blood of Jesus Christ. John said, 
uh, greater is he that's in you than, than he that is in the world. Right. And uh, we've overcome things because we're saved. We're overcomers of sin. Again, 1 John 1, 7 tells you that. The, the blood cleanseth us from all sin. 1 John 2, verses 15 to through 17, he says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world is, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And, uh, and then he says, the verse is not coming to him like it should. Remember we was talking about that Linda last night? This, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see that gray hair? Yeah, yeah. Anybody got the same problem? <laughs> right, amen. I, I used to have no trouble pulling that verse. But anyway, talk, talk about all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And whatever's in the world is not of the Father, but is of the world. And so uh, we have overcome that if we practice that overcoming. Okay, a lot of Christians live to uh, yield to sin and temptation, all that kind of stuff. But we don't have to. Right. A sin shall not have dominion over you, the Bible says. So if it does, it's because we allow it. Right. You know why? You know why Christians sin because they want to. Right. That's the only reason anybody sins. If the devil can't make you do it, your peers can't make you do it. If you right. decide to sin, it's because you decided to do so. But we can't overcome those things. Revelation 7 verse, verse 14 says, These have washed the robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Uh, boy, I'm so glad of that. We can overcome sin. We don't have to sin. I'm, I remember back in the 1990s, they had a bumper sticker everywhere. Uh, you know the little circle and put a something's in it, put a do mm -hmm. like that means right. that's not that's not valid. It had drugs in there. It said say no to drugs. Put the word sin in there. Just say no to sin, whatever it is. No matter how big or how small the temptation, just say no. Uh, I'm not going to yeah. do that. I don't have to do that. I don't have to yield to that. Not only overcomers of sin, but overcomers of self. Could I say our biggest enemy is ourselves? Yeah. Most of we cause most of our own problems. Proverbs 14, 14, a good man that's not washed in the blood shall be satisfied from himself. Boy, that's a good thing to get satisfied from. Mm -hmm. I mean, our pride just eats us alive. Mm -hmm. We think we're the greatest thing on the planet by half the time. But he said, he said, uh, you'd be satisfied if you're right with God, you'd be satisfied from yourself. Romans 7, verses 24 and 25. Paul is in a dither there. He says, and, and by the way, he had the same problems we had. Read Romans chapter 7. He had to fight his flesh. Uh, giving him a fit all the time. Amen. He said, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And the very next verse, he answers that. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. He can deliver me from myself. And then we got, we're got we overcomers of Satan as well. 2 Timothy 2, verses 25 and 26 talks about people being taken captive by the devil and Amen. his will. And then it tells you in those verses that God can give you um, uh, repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. What is that talking about? And God can give you the ability in your mind and heart to realize, hey, I'm not doing right here. I'm following the devil instead of the Lord. And I need to turn around. That's that repentance uh, definition. I need to turn around. In fact, Psalm 119, verses 59 and 60 gives you the definition of repentance. I was going this way. I thought I'm my ways, and I turned and went back to the commandments of God where, where I should have been. So we can overcome Satan if we will do so. Revelation 12, verse 11, they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb. You see, it always goes back to the blood. Amen. That's where our victory comes from. 1 John 4, verse 4 uh, said we've overcome because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. 1 John 5, verse 4, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Faith in what? Faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The previous verse we read. Over in, in Romans chapter 8, the last several verses, Paul talks about how we, we're overcomers of everything that comes our way if we just stay right with the Lord. Uh, and he says in verse 37, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Do you know the difference in a conqueror and more than a conqueror? Here's the difference. A conqueror destroys the enemy or defeats the enemy. America's always been a conqueror, never more than a conqueror. How's that? We defeat our enemy, and then we finance him to build back so we can fight him again down the road. <laughs> Amen. We built back Germany several times, Japan, all that kind of stuff. But more than a conqueror, you defeat the enemy, and you take what he's got, and you keep it. Joshua was more than a conqueror. Amen. He took the land of, uh, of Israel from the Canaanites, you know, and took it over and took it back for God. And God promised him in Joshua chapter 1, he said, everywhere you put your foot, I'll give it to you. Right. Going into the promised land. Well, it says the same thing to us from the right. spiritual sins. Every, everything you get away from the devil on, God lets you do that and gives you the strength to do that. But if we're not careful... We won't be more than conquerors. We'll be a conqueror and give it back to him, okay? Right. 
Right. Somebody said, you give the devil an inch, pretty soon he'll be a ruler. Mm -hmm. Amen. Overcomers. Uh, overcoming of sin, that's the world. Okay. Overcoming of self, that's the flesh. Mm -hmm. Overcoming of Satan, that's the devil. That's our three, three big enemies. Yeah. Like I said, I believe the flesh is worse than we have to contend oh, with. Uh, anyway, but we can be overcomers. And because we're overcomers, we have boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10 verse 19 says. Okay, so we're overcomers by the blood. Blood next, number four. Uh, one. We're one. What we need. Uh, because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 for just a moment. Ephesians chapter 4. You glad you're saved? Amen. Amen. Because of the blood. Mm, right. No other reason. All right, Ephesians chapter 4. Let's just pick it up at verse 4. There is one body. That's the body of Christ. That's the church. One spirit. That's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Even as you're called in one hope of your calling. Our hope is called the blessed hope. Titus 2.13. Looking right. for the soon return of Jesus Christ and us to get, get raptured out of here. Amen. Our new bodies and so forth. One hope of your calling. One Lord. That's Jesus Christ. One faith. That's Christianity. One baptism. That's not in the baptistry. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost putting you into the body of Jesus Christ. You read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. And one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. We're one because we belong to the Lord. Amen. We're one with Christ. John 17, verse 24. Jesus is praying. By the way, John 17 is, is the Lord's Prayer. The one in Matthew 6 that people call the Lord's Prayer is really the prayer for the disciples. He's, Jesus is teaching them after this man prayed. You. But his prayer is in John chapter 17 and verse 24. He says, Father, I will that they also, talking about the saints of God, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. Uh, John 14 verse 3. I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. I'm looking forward to that day. Are you? Amen. Amen. Be with him forever. It Amen. says in, in Romans 8, 17, he talks about us being glorified together with the Lord. Not only are we one with, with Jesus, but we're one with each other, one with the saints. Look with me at John chapter 11, where in that prayer, he, he tells us that very clearly. John chapter 17. <clears throat> John 17, uh, verse uh, 11. And, and the Lord is praying here. He says, Now I am no more in the world, but these, the disciples, the saints, are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Look at verse 21 in that same, the same chapter. In verse 21, he says, Still praying that they, the saints, all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Verse 22, and the glory that which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be uh, one even as we are one. Right, amen. Did you just read that? You got the glory of Christ on you. Right, amen. That's what Paul talks about when he said, I glory, I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Over there in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. So we're one with Jesus. We're one with each other. A unified body. That's why unity in the church is so important. Could I just say in passing, got nothing to do with the message. If you've got a problem in this church, you need to go talk to the pastor about it. Don't be, don't be running your mouth to people. Don't be gossiping to other people. And I don't like this. And I don't appreciate that. And all that kind of stuff. And if people get a crawl in, in, their, in them. And they'll get mad at the preacher or one of the members. First thing you know, they've left the church. That shouldn't happen. Amen. Right. You, yeah. If you're in a Bible preaching church, and I could say, say to you that you are, then stay put. If God put you here, why don't you go somewhere else? So if there's a problem, get it straightened out. Don't let it eat on you until it becomes a, a bitterness or something like that. And uh, churches get split over stuff like that. It doesn't, doesn't have to happen. Amen. Amen. Anyway, that ain't, that ain't, don't put anything in the offering for that. That ain't <laughs> <not over. laughs> Let me say lastly, okay, the blood, because of the blood we're bought, we're loved, we're overcomers, we're one with the Lord, and let me say lastly, we're destined for glory. We're heaven bound because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, look over at Romans chapter 8. 
Romans chapter 8. Peter says in, um, he says in 1 first, first Peter chapter 1 verse 2, he says that we are elect, the saints are elect according to the foreknowledge of God his Father. And the verse I'm fixing to show you in Romans is talking about his foreknowledge. That's why I'm reading this verse. Foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so because of that, what I just read there from 1 Peter, that's why these verses are true here. In Romans chapter 8, look at verse 29. For whom he did foreknow. That's anybody saved. He knew you were going to be saved. And, for, and by the way, that's not Calvinism. He didn't program you to get saved. Right. He just knew you would because he, you know, he's all-knowing. He's omniscient. He knows everything. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. And that's one of three times the word predestinates in the Bible. It's got nothing to do with lost people at all. Every context where that word is found is talking to saved people. Yeah, Only right. saved people have been predestinated by God to something. And that, we'll see what it is here. Uh, he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That won't fit a lost person at all. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate to do what? To be conformed to the image of his son. Then he also called. He called into the family of God. And whom he called. Then he also justified. Just as if you've never sinned at all. The blood washed it all away. And whom he justified. Then he also glorified. And we realize that's a, that's a future statement there. You're not glorified yet, but you're going to be as guaranteed because of the foreknowledge of God and trusting in the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. So we are destined for glory, we who Amen. are saved. I don't know about you, Ron. I'm sick and tired of this old world. I'm looking forward to it, man. Just get us out of here. Amen. Um, some people say, well, I, you know, I don't, I don't want the rapture to take place this week. i got such an... Ain't nothing mm. out there going on that's more valuable than getting up there to be with the Lord. Nothing. Amen. Amen. nothing. Our forgiveness of sins is through the blood. Closing thoughts here. Our salvation is through the blood. Our sanctification, being right with God, is through the blood. Our security, eternally saved, and nothing can change that, is through the blood, because without shedding the blood, there's no remission. Our escape from hell is through the blood. Our access to God is through the blood. Our access to heaven is through the blood. Our access to eternity, eternal life, is through the blood. And uh, yet in John chapter 8, Jesus is talking to, to the Pharisees, religious people, okay? Believed in God, but they didn't take it far enough. He said, you're yet in your sins. And where I am, you cannot come. If the blood's applied, you're not yet in your sins. And one day you'll go to where he is. Now, if it has been applied, then that verse fits. You're yet in your sins. Let me close with this question. Are you washed in the blood? Preacher, I believe you. The blood of his son cleanseth us from all sin. Amen.